feel like an old man. All right, cool. All right, Peaks, welcome back. We um we took a long break. I went on vacation, what have you. But and of course I was sick and busy with life, but we're back. We're back. Um, so we went over right configuring VDOMs, right? Um, took care of most of what it looks like. Um, I'm gonna give you guys visibility on what it looks like to link different VDOMs together. So enter VDOM links um and how that looks configured or what have you it's real simple so i don't think we need a lab for that one um and some best practices and troubleshooting i want to go ahead and go over that because if we go over that then we can go ahead and um in the next two or three months we can actually close out sections four five six seven and eight um if we do it the right way and then you guys be done with this fortinet and a c4 journey you guys will be off to do your own studying to prep take your exam Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and roll out. So, enter VDOM links, right? They are, right? We talked about, you know, different VDOMs that be allocated different interfaces. They have interfaces to go out or what have you, right? And if we're going to go ahead, right, we go ahead and review, right? Each VDOM, right? It's basically its own separate FortiGate, right? right with these separate FortiGate devices right within it virtually right you would normally connect a network cable configure you know routing and those firewall policies between them right if they were different physical FortiGate pop like FortiGate devices right right but these different VDOMs the different virtual FortiGates are on the same FortiGate right so how can we go ahead and route traffic between them right so that solution is InterVDOM links, right? And so what InterVDOM links is, right? It's a virtual interface, right? I'm gonna say it again. It is a virtual interface, a type of virtual interfaces, because there's different virtual interfaces, but it's a type of virtual interface <clears throat> that routes traffic between VDOMs. That's it, okay? So what does this do, right? With this ability, this removes the need for my Kevier or Dom to have to, if you have different VDOMs, to have to connect the cable, right? A physical cable that goes out, right? From one VDOM, leaves the FortiGate and goes to another dedicated interface to the other VDOM on that same FortiGate, physical FortiGate. So that eliminates that, right? Right? So, in the case of, right, of, you know, NAT to NAT and to VDOM links, right, since there are different FortiGates, both sides of that link must be on the same um, subnet, right? Because um, essentially what you're doing, right, because again, you're linking two FortiGates, right? So stay with me. Since, since we're doing, you know, NAT to NAT or just, you know, FortiGate to FortiGate links, right, we're basically creating a point to point network connection, right? And a point-to-point -point connection literally consists of two hosts, right? Two devices, one point and another point connecting together. That's how you remember what point-to-point -point is, okay? So it has to be on the same subnet. Please remember that, all right? Keep in mind though, right? Right? That similar to using, right, inner VLAN routing, we spoke about it whenever we had our routing and switching section, right? Layer three must be involved, right? And the reason being is because this is a layer three devices, right? FortiGates, virtual FortiGates are layer three devices, right? With that being said, you can create inter VDOM links from a layer three perspective. You cannot do it from a layer two perspective, okay? Right, you can do a layer three virtual FortiGate and a layer two transparent FortiGate or, or VDOM, right? And you can operate it like that, but it cannot be, they both can't be layer two. Of course, you have the potential to have loops within your network because again, it's still coming off the same physical device. That's why you need those layer three boundaries between these different virtual FortiGates, okay? Any questions? I know that was a lot. No, not so far. Okay. Okay. All right. So 
we're still staying on the slide because you know got a little few things to talk about. Um, when you're you know when you're creating those interview DOM links, right? You must create the virtual interfaces, and you guys are going to see how that's done, right? And with creating those interfaces, guess what else we have to create? We have to make sure that we create the appropriate firewall policies in each VDA, right? We need to make sure that we're allowing traffic to specific interfaces. We are still a firewall here, no matter if it's 10 or 15 virtual firewalls on that same device. And we're trying to um, you know, link them between each other. We still need firewall policies. OK, so make sure in your checklist that you are doing this right. And you make sure you remember this for the exam Enter VDOM links. They still need to have firewall policies. OK. All right. All right. And as you guys know, if the firewall policies aren't in place with every ACL from a foundational level, it's always going to have an implicit deny. If you don't have an allowed policy anywhere, it's going to block traffic. Right. Right. Also. Right, because again, it, we are talking about layer three, layer three device, FortiGate. Right, routes are required to correctly route packets between the two VDOPs. Okay. All right. So next, right? Let's take a look at how this looks like. Okay, so. We're looking at the screen. We're seeing we have our VDOM, right? We have our VDOM set up, right? We would go ahead and get on the GUI, right? And if and if the first step to create this inner VDOM link is to go ahead and create that interface, right? We're going to go ahead, go into global settings, right? And we go ahead and say, hey, create new VDOM link. You're going to see it right there, right? And we will go ahead and create that virtual interface, right? And then we go ahead and select uh, VDOM link, right? And of course, you'll see all the settings. And it's similar to you guys creating a physical interface or dedicating a physical interface on a FortiGate, right? All you're doing is just creating that, that virtual interface that I'm telling you about, which is, of course, dedicated to, you know, inter VDOM routing, right? Inter VDOM links, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, I'll keep going. All right, now, with everything that you know about computing, with everything that you know about, you know, virtualization, right? With having these multiple virtual uh, domains or, or multiple virtual firewalls on the same physical device, there's something that is going to be a burden that you have to think about. It's our hardware, right? Resources are going to... Um, take a burden, they have to be allocated so that we make sure we have efficiency um, within our network, okay? One thing we can do, right, if we have, you know, the, the legit resources and we can go ahead and allocate it to, is that we can go ahead and do link acceleration, right? As long as we have the MP4 and MP6 processes, right, we can go ahead and include Right, we can go ahead and include these processors on those into VDOM links, right? So we can go ahead and accelerate that traffic between VDOMs, right? And we'll need that because again, this is on the same device. So again, into VDOM links, these are links between to link uh, to allow traffic between two VDOMs on the same advice, same device. So we can go ahead, accelerate that traffic, allocate it to those VDOM links. Right. And what will happen is you'll see these interfaces that you see. Right. MP, MPU zero, MPU one. Those are your MP, MP4, MP6 processes, depending on your device. Right. You'll see these interfaces. They'll be visible to you on the GUI and the CLI. Right. You can go ahead and allocate them to your um, allocate them to your interview down link. All right. By default, these interfaces. Um, in each enter VDOM link are assigned to the root VDOM. So you got to go ahead and use the interfaces to accelerate that enter VDOM link traffic by assigning each interface in the pair of the VDOMs that you want to offload that traffic to. Okay. So for example, right, let's say Don added a VDOM called new VDOM, right, to a FortiGate with MP4 processors. 
what Don has to do now is um, click system, network, and then interfaces, right? Go to the interface that says NPU, that's one of the processors, NPU zero, right? Dash VLink one interface, right? And set the VDOM to new VDOM, okay? So what does that do? What that does is exactly what this slide is about. It is accelerating, right, that link, right? It's dedicating that processor to this inter-VDOM link, right? And it'll be a new, right? It'll be a new link or a new, right, a new um, allocated resource for this inter-VDOM link between the new VDOM that Don created and the link that it's going towards, okay? All right, let's keep going. With that being said, right, let's go ahead and do a quick knowledge check. Don, I know you I know you hopped in a little bit late, but it's all good. We're doing a double header today. All right, so question one. What is a requirement for creating an inter-VDOM link between two VDOMs? Is it A, the next generation firewall mode of at least one VDOM must be profile-based? Or is it B? at least one of the VDOMs must be operating in that mode. Mike Evia? A. I'm going to I'm going to read the answers again and the question. Okay. B. What is the requirement for creating an inter-VDOM link between two VDOMs? Is it A, the next generation firewall mode of at least one VDOM must be profile based or is it B, at least one of the VDOMs must be operating in that mode? Uh, it has to be in that mode. Oops, there sorry. we go. There we go. And Don, to go ahead and review, um, just to show you, right? Um, VDOM, right? Enter VDOM links, they go ahead and support NAT to NAT, NAT to transparent, and transparent to NAT. They do not operate, right? They do not uh, support transparent to transparent. So one of the, so from this question, right? One of the requirements is operating in that mode. Make sense? Yep. Okay. All right, so question two, which type of VDOM link requires that both sides of the link be assigned an IP address within the same subnet? Mike Evie, this should be an easy one for you. Is it A, NAT to transparent, or is it B, NAT to NAT? Okay, read the question again, please. I, I got you. Sorry. So which type of VDOM link requires that both sides of the link be assigned an IP address within the same subnet. Is it A, NAT to transparent, or is it B, NAT to NAT? Um, is it NAT to NAT? B? Okay, I'm gonna read the question again. Oh God, okay. Because when you guys are taking the exam, um, you guys need to think about what the question is asking you, okay? All right. So I'll bring back up that slide, right? And think about what I'm saying. You can tell me to slow down if I'm reading it too fast. Which type of VDOM link requires that both sides of the link be assigned an IP address within the same subnet? Is it A, NAT to transparent, or is it B, NAT to NAT? Oh, it's A, not transparent. Mikevia, let's think about <laughs> this. Here. I give you the wrong answer. I'm so sorry. Okay. So, 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 so it's okay. It's okay. So this, so this is good because this is good practice for the exam. Let's break down the answers that we have available to us, right? So, NAT to transparent, right? What do you correlate NAT to? Layer, layer two or layer three? Nah, it's layer three. What do you correlate transparent to? Layer two or layer three? Transparent? Yep. Probably layer two. Okay. So if the question is asking which type of VDOM link requires that both sides of the link be assigned an IP address within the same subnet, why would the answer be not to transparent? Because I need both ends, right? It's a point-to-point -point link. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a so oh, yeah. I need I <laughs> I need both sides, right? The question is asking me if this VDOM link requires both sides of the link to have an IP address, what does that tell you? 
layer three to layer three, correct? Not layer three to layer two. That makes sense? Uh-oh, you yep. muted. Okay. Oh, yes, sorry. Okay. Does that make sense on, on how you guys need to break down the questions whenever you see it on the exam? Yeah. Okay. All right, I, let's keep going. Always that model to kind of like make it make sense. So yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, let's go ahead and keep rolling. All right, last but not least, let's go ahead, go ahead and go over some uh, best practices and a little bit of troubleshooting methods. Um, like I told you guys before, right? VDOMS, VDOMS is virtual, right? Meaning it is a logical separation of the physical firewall, right? With that being said, no matter if you have two, three, four, or five VDOMs, all of the VDOMs share the physical resources because they're on the same firewall, okay? Unlike, right? Unlike the FortiGate VM or or the, uh, you know, um, so, you know, maybe you create a FortiGate VM within, you know, um, virtual box or something like that, or what you guys see, see me down the path with EVNG, right? VDOMs are not allocated and balanced with, you know, virtual CPU cores, virtual RAM, and other virtualized soft, other virtualized hardware. You have to legit allocate resources to it, right? If you go ahead and plan and design your network to, you know, have VDOMs, do inter-VDOM links or what have you, you have to make sure that you fine tune it for performance, right? You can go ahead and configure resource limits, right? Um, for each feature. So maybe, you know, my Kiva, your design has IP set tunnels, address objects, all of that for the three VDOMs that you have in your setup, right? You can go ahead and just allocate resource limits. So one is not overburdening another, right? Maybe VDOM A is taking up most of the resources, um, but, you know, VDOM B and C has almost the damn near the same setup, but it doesn't have any resources left. You can set limits so that you're sharing the wealth of physical resources to your VDOMs. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, okay. okay. And the proper term, right, um, because I gave it to you guys high level, is that... Um, you can give a global resources limit and a VDOM resources limit, right? That global resources limit is allocated to each feature on the entire FortiGate, right? So you can configure that. Now that VDOM resources limit, right? It's allocated to each feature in each VDOM, right? And what that does is guarantees a per VDOM minimum resource allocation, okay? Right? And no VDOM, right? What it also does, right? This VDOM resource limit, no VDOM can starve the others of all the device resources, okay? All right, let me show you guys how that looks, all right? So you go to, you know, you have your FortiGate that's set up with, you know, multi-VDOM, split VDOM, what have you. You can go ahead, you can go to global, you can go to system, um, and you can either configure, like we were talking about, the global, global resources limits, right? And you can configure the, per VDOM resource limits, right? So you can go ahead and configure that here, okay? This is a good virtual representation of how that looks like, okay? And as you guys can see highlighted within the VDOM section, we can allocate resources to VPN, IPsec, phase one tunnels, right? If you, you know, maybe you do a benchmark and you see, hmm, okay, I ran it for about a week. Looks like having 10 tunnels, 10 VPN tunnels, on this VDOM takes up this many resources. Let me give it a thousand more, right? Or maybe I need to reach out to my vendor and buy a, another hardware heavy box so it can go ahead and handle three or four VDOMs, okay? All right, so yeah, you can configure your own quotas, your own limits, your own minimums, et cetera, okay? All right, and with that, right? Um, you do have the ability, right? Because of course you'll have you being the you being the network security engineer, you'll have with that benchmarking, you'll have to monitor, right? Monitor progress, monitor performance, or what have you. So you can actually monitor, 
right? Those VDOM resources, not just, you know, <clears throat> not just to make sure that it's working, but also for research, right? To see how you need to split up the rest of your, you know, the rest of your, um, the rest of your VDOMs that you plan to go ahead and create in the future, right? What, it, what it's going to go ahead and show, and I think you guys saw it um, in that last video, the last session we had, is that that VDOM monitor is going to display the CPU utilization, the memory utilization. Those are the two most important things, and you guys can see those in those co columns, right? And to go ahead and get there, right, you can go ahead and click. Don, I got you. I see your hand. You can get. You can go ahead and click global system VDOM, like you guys see, right, in the specific VDOM, right, to go ahead and see this monitor. Okay, Don, what's your question, buddy? Yeah, so you probably went over this, but I'm I'm actually headed home. What was the limit? Is there a limit of VDOMs that you can create again? That you, um, yeah, if there is a limit. It's per device. So per every device. every device, every forty gate, right? The different models of forty gates. You should see that. You should see that on your data sheet. Okay, so just research that, right? Um, before you implement, right, a 40 gate network and you know for a fact you're going to be implementing VDOPs. Okay. 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 Um, within this section, we did go over, you know, VDOM admins and what have you. And, you know, some of the things that maybe you'll have to troubleshoot is a VDOM administrator is having difficulty, right, gaining access, right? Um, right, so you can go ahead, you can go ahead, right? You can have them confirm, you know, confirm the administrator VDOM with their username, confirm that they, ha that they have the allocated VDOM interfaces assigned to their um, username profile or what have you, confirm the VDOM administrators access privileges and confirm trusted host and IP because that can also be a blocker from um, a admin, right? Logging into the device, right? Best practices, right? Create a VDOM uh, specific to just, you know, um, create a VDOM specific administrator account for each VDOM. So Bob and Stacy, right? If they're in charge of VDOM A, make sure you create that admin account just dedicated for VDOM a right and if you have other people make sure you you whenever you're creating their accounts locally that you dedicate it to a specific vdom right and last but not least right just a reminder always avoid right giving super admin access to a vdom administrator if you give them super admin access they will have access to the entire forty game okay that you implemented vdoms okay all right Couple of tips, right? You guys seen it before outside of VDOMs, right? Getting your CLI, you can go ahead and do a, you know, packet capture, right? You can do a sniffer trace and you can do a packet flow trace. Here are the here are the commands. You can take a screenshot. You don't have to remember the commands for the exam. This is just good for your um this is just good for your uh for your career. And of course, just to remember and as you guys practice and you know learn a lot about gates and you know Linux and the CLI you'll this stuff will become second nature so uh, don't be worried just make sure you you know get some practice in with the CLI commands okay so with that being said we're going to go ahead I'm going to ask you these two questions and we're going to close out the VDOM section right so question one of these options right what is a possible reason why an administrator might not be able to gain access to a specific VDOM is it a the administrator is using an IP address that is not specified as a trusted host, or is it B? The administrator is using the super admin profile. Can you say the question one more time? Sure. Of these options, right? What is a possible reason why an administrator might not be able to gain access to a specific VDOM? Is it A, the administrator is using an IP address that is not specified as a trusted host? Or is it B, the administrator is using the super admin profile? I'll say B, because the super, um, yeah, I'll say B. 
No, so hey, you... I'm sorry. We'll trust the, the IP address. I'm sorry. I there meant to go. say, uh, A, the IP address because the super admin should be able, that's just the account. Like, he can't reach it. So, yeah, so, I'll say A. Yep, yep. So the super admin, they they have access to the entire device, no matter which yeah. VM. So that wouldn't that wouldn't be the reason why an administrator can't gain access to the specific VDOM. Okay. So yeah. Okay. It's it's a it could either be the trusted host feature, right? Maybe he's trying to access the device from a subnet that's not enabled, right? Or configured within the trusted host configuration. So good job. All right. Question two. Which troubleshooting tool is most suitable when trying to verify the firewall policy used by an inter VDOM link. Now, I'm going to give you the answer to this one because I didn't go into depth about the differences between a sniffer trace and packet flow trace. The answer is packet flow trace. Okay. So let's go ahead and let me go ahead and break it down. Okay, so sniff trace, right? Sniff trace when you know when you're troubleshooting networks, um, you can go ahead with a sniffer, right? Look inside the headers of the packets, right? Um, see the source and destination, right? You can go ahead and um, it's similar to a packet capture, right? So you can basically see everything that's in it, right? See you know where the traffic is ingressing, where it's coming in, and where it's leaving right, as far as the interfaces, right? And it's very useful, especially with VDOMs, right? Because you need to see where it's coming in and where it's going out. Packet flow trace, right? So with packet flow, right, we can go ahead and get a little bit more details, right, of seeing how the packet is flowing through the network, right? Well, I'm sorry, it's flowing through the device, right? Which is in charge of segmenting two networks, okay? And so what we would see with a packet flow is, okay, this packet came in, it touched this policy, this policy, that policy, it got allowed by this policy, and that happened here, this was selected, excellent. So it's giving you even it's not just giving you layer three right and just it just not giving you a packet capture just like the sniffer traces that packet flow is actually giving you a simulation of how if this packet is flowing through me right i'm giving right that packet flow trace is giving you a visualization of how it looks to the cpu to process that packet okay does that make sense Yes. Okay. So sniffer trace, packet capture. Packet flow trace, how the device, how the packets actually flow through the device. Okay. Just remember that for the exam. Can you confirm what the sniffer, the sniffer, the, the sniffer um, is again? So, so the sniffer, it's used for forming a packet capture. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. I got it. Pack, packet flow trace. It's just it. It's used to go ahead and look at more granular details that uh, on top of the packet capture. So the, the packet flow trace is doing the packet capture as well, but it's giving a little bit more details of how it's flowing through the entire device. What decisions gotcha. the fi the firewall is making. Make sense. Yep. All right. With that being said, you guys are done with the VDEM section. And so we'll go ahead and start uh, layer two switching on Thursday. I will be out tomorrow. I do have a work dinner to attend tomorrow. But yes, Thursday, we can go ahead and get restarted, OK? All right. All right, That's guys. Good. Later. All right.